What's going on, family? Good morning, and God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez. And we're here for another session to get together, get into the Word real quick, right? And start the day off that way. Starting the day off that way is the best way. In my humble opinion, I believe if you put God first in your day, amen, He will be the last and the first of your day. So therefore, since God is awesome, he's good in every single aspect of his character, his ways are amazing, his truth is always true, his love, his grace, his mercy, everything that he has for us, his healing power, amen, and his word over our lives that's telling us to stay calm even when we face chaos, amen. And we're going to learn today, my hope and my prayer is that we learn today how to calm the chaos. And how did, how did I name this? Morning Devo, amen. Think it's calming the chaos. God is calling on you. God is calling on me to trust in him. That's a calling from God to trust in him. Do you really trust God when life spirals out of control? Do you trust him even when you don't understand him? Amen. How many times? I can't tell you how many times. God has made a decision. God has done something in my life. God has done something around me, in me, through me. And I'm like, I don't understand why you did that. Even though I didn't understand, and sometimes I still don't understand what God does, amen, uh, I still trust him. Who else am I going to trust that has all life and eternity in his hand? Who else am I going to trust who created all things visible and invisible? Who else am I going to trust that left us his will and testament? Who else am I going to trust with my life? You? I don't think so. Amen. I said that respectfully. Or... Am I going to trust a religion? Am I going to trust an idol? Am I going to trust a statue? Am I going to trust myself when it comes to all things that's going chaotic in my life? Am I going to put the trust and hope and faith in my own self? Well, a lot of people do that, and the results, you could ask them what the results are. Some people would say, oh, I'm good. I don't need God. Well, that's a contradiction all the way through. First of all, you're not good. And second of all, you do need God. Because if you want something good in your life or you want someone good in your life, God is the only one who is good and who could give us the goods that he offers us. The problem is when we face chaos, amen, um, the person who can calm the chaos in our lives, a lot of times we just reject them or we go to plan B. We don't keep God plan A. We keep God plan B sometimes because we think we got this. Amen. And if I'm not careful, I could fall into that trap as well. Amen. Pastor Michael Jakes, good morning. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yes. Welcome to the morning, Devos. Good to see you, my friend and my brother. Amen. So before we head forward, I got to ask you the question. Did you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you didn't, then what we're going to get into today is really not going to make a lot of sense. And the trust issue that some people don't trust in God. Some people don't trust in the Lord. Some people don't trust in. I understand why people don't trust in Christianity. Um, you know, you have a point there. But when you trust in Christ, um, you stepped up a level. You stepped past churchianity, past Christianity. Now you're going to the source of all trust. It's him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you give your life to him? Amen. It's a QR code right there on the screen. If you're not watching right now, amen, and you're just listening on a podcast, connect with me. Email me at DJ Sam Rock at Soulwinners with a Z to ORG, and I'll send you the link um, to this free resource that I created. And if you want to connect with me, or connect with the community that's happening right now, go to live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Everything all soul winners there, amen, on the website. It's clean, right, distraction-free. That's my guarantee on the website. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, I already got a prayer request early this morning, amen, and I prayed. Um, if you ask for a prayer, I'm going to pray, whether I connect with you and you hear me verbally praying or not. I'm praying. Amen. Um, you could trust me on that or not. It's all good. God knows um, that I pray for the people who ask for prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. So therefore, boom, that's it. I believe in the power of prayer. We're going to be in Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. We're going to take something that God was communicating to his people in the Old Testament. Right. And we're going to look at it and we're going to say, wow, God spoke that to them um, and God did that for them. Why wouldn't he do that for us? That's the way I look at some stories and some Old Testament scriptures. I look at it or Old Covenant scriptures. I look at it and be like, well, I know that wasn't 
exactly for the New Testament Christian. I know that wasn't exactly for, you know, my generation, but amen. But God said it, God did it. He revealed it. He had a purpose for what he says and his word stands through all time. Amen. So I'll take from it and I'll be like, wow, if God did it that time for those people, for that nation, for that time, why wouldn't he do it for this time, for this nation, for these people, right? And, you know, it's just a question that's worth asking God, wouldn't, wouldn't you do it for us? Amen. So that way we know that God of yesterday is the God of today and God of tomorrow and God forevermore. The same God we see in the scriptures in the old is the same God we see in the scriptures in the new. And the same God we've seen yesterday is his resume of what he could do today and forevermore. God is the same. He doesn't change. He changes us. Amen. His word doesn't change. The word changes us us. So Exodus 14, 14, get ready. Amen. That little powerful scripture in the book of Exodus. And we're going to find out, you know, there was, used to be shirts. I don't know if they're still around. T-shirts that used to say, just stay calm, stay calm. Amen. And I resonated with the shirt, even though I never brought one. I understood those shirts. Amen. They were onto something. It was like, listen, we know everything's going on, but just stay calm. Because why would we if something chaotic happens in your life and you're going to happen to respond chaotically, chaos and chaos does not equal peace at all. So to counter right the chaos in your life, I think we should go to the Prince of Peace, the one who offers us peace, the peace that we don't even understand. Amen. It, it surpasses all understanding the peace of God. But first, you have to have peace with God to receive the peace of God and through trusting in him. We will receive that. Amen. So, what did I say earlier? God is calling on you to trust him. I know a lot is going on in a lot of people's lives, including ours and my family. But if I don't trust him, who else am I going to trust? Who else am I going to place my hope, my faith, my trust in? So, do you trust him even when you don't understand him? Calm in the chaos today on the morning, Devo. I'm going to hope and pray right now. We're going to pray together that God will move this word in our spirit, move this word in our lives so we can remain calm. Amen. Good morning, Sister Joyce. Good morning. God bless you. Blessings to you and your family as well. Thank you for coming by and thank you for being faithful to the morning, Devo. You're a blessing to our lives. So let's pray. And then we're going to take a minute to share this out with as many people as we can. Remember, if you know somebody right now that doesn't have social media, they're not on social media, you could also let them know that we're streaming live on YouTube as well. DJ Sam Rock is my YouTube channel. I made it very simple. Or you can send them to live. That's so winners with a Z dot O-R-G. Amen. Send them right there. Amen. And there's all things so winners. And it's clean. They don't need. <clears throat> all they got to do is sign up once. It takes less than a minute. And it's a one and done deal. And then they'll be connected to the community of someone that's over there as well. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, that even in the storm, you still are with us. Even through the storms of life, even through the chaos of life, you are still with us. I pray, Lord God, that you would teach us more and more and more of who you are, your character, your love, your grace, your mercy, your word over our lives. So that way we will become more like you. Father God, help us to become more like the one that created us. I pray, Lord God, that our chaos that we face today or tomorrow or that we faced yesterday or that we dealt with already, that's trying to return into our lives, that you will help us to remain calm, that you will help us to stay calm in your word, in your presence, knowing that you are able, willing, and your purpose and plan remain over our lives. I pray for that person, that individual, that sister, that brother, that family member that needs a word for you from, from you today. I pray that they will receive this word as their rainbow word, as their saving word, as their changing word, as their transformational word, as their calming word today. And they will embrace this word. And they will take it upon themselves to go deeper into your word and to trust in you. I hope and pray, Lord God, that you do that for me and my family and for everybody's family that's represented. Those who are listening and those who are watching right now. I pray a hedge of protection over their hearts and minds, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I pray health to their bodies, strength to their bones, in Jesus' holy name. And also pray, Lord God, that we will come together, united in faith, united in one faith, one spirit, one love, one grace, one mercy, one kingdom, the kingdom of God. And that we will no longer um, live in chaos, knowing that 
you are the one who can calm the chaos. Knowing what we know, Lord God, help us to activate what we know and to remain calm in every situation and in every situation to put our trust and hope in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Brother Matthew, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. I'm going to be back after these 60 seconds. We're going to come back and we're going to go to Exodus chapter 14, 14. Help me share this out to as many people as you can. When we come back, we'll be at Exodus 14, 14. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. We're back. Let's get into Exodus chapter 14, 14. Amen. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Version. Amen. So we could get a, 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 a little taste more of what the Word is saying here. Exodus 14, 14 in the Amplified Version. The Bible says, The Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. There's a battle raging for our souls right now. So even in that battle... And I said, what battle, Sam? You're just talking on a camera. Nothing's happening. Looks like it's peaceful in your home. Looks like it's peaceful in your studio. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the Lord will fight for you. Only need to, you only need to keep silent and remain calm. Because there is a battle going on right now. For my attention, for your attention. Something that's trying to distract us, distract you, distract me. Uh, illness that's trying to come into our body and take over. That we don't know about right now. And God is holding these things at bay. If he allows things to happen in our lives that we do not understand, the question still remains, will you trust him even if we don't understand why? God is the one who knows all things from beginning to the end and then to the future. So you might be saying, why did God allow this in my life? I've done that. I've been there, done that. I still say it every now and then. Why would God allow this in my life at this point in my life and stuff like that? I don't understand him sometimes. But I trust him all the time. It's a difference. So the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. So if the Lord is fighting something, a battle, whatever, don't you think that we um, should be paying attention to what God is doing on our lives? Even if we don't understand what he's doing, let's pay attention to what he is doing. So that way we don't give credit to the enemy. We don't blame the devil. We won't blame you. I won't blame myself. I won't blame you. No. It's not the fault. The consequences that we're facing on this planet Earth, the brokenness, um, the sickness, the disease, the death, and all that stuff, all those consequences are not based on what God did. All those consequences are based on what mankind has done, his creation. And I already hear people saying, well, if God knew um, that we was going to go through all this pain and suffering uh, because of the disobedience of the first humans that he created, why would he create them? Well, there it is. Now, understanding why God did a thing doesn't mean we can't trust him because he did it anyway. And not only that, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, beautiful situation. Genesis 3, you see the fall of man, but also you see the redemption, the plan of redemption for mankind. So man fell and God picked us up. Amen. Immediately. Yes, he did know what was going to happen, but he gave us the will to make a choice. Amen. You ever, you ever had to make a choice, right? And you had options to make all different kinds of choices. But ultimately, it's either yes, I'm going to do something, or no, I'm not going to do something. Well, Adam and Eve, they had options. But the ultimate choice was, yes, I'm going to trust God, or no, I'm not going to trust God. And unfortunately, they chose, no, I'm not going to trust God entirely. Um, the serpent had you know, some cunning precepts and concepts and ideas that he gave to Eve. And they've been into that forbidden fruit from that forbidden tree because it sounded good. The world will make things sound real good 
And it's up to us whether or not we're going to be the trustworthy ones or the ones to trust in the trustworthy one, which is the Lord, right? We could trust God or we could trust this world. A lot of people choose to trust the world system. I understand why. I don't condone it. I don't agree. I don't promote that, that you trust this world system. But I understand why people would trust the world system because in the, it, it actually it looks easy to trust the world. But the consequences that it develops in your life and in my life, if I choose to go that way, they're never good. They're never good. It's very temporary, very shallow, very narrow. They call Christians narrow-minded. I believe the world is more narrow-minded. I believe the world is brainwashed. They say, oh, you Christians are all brainwashed. I believe the world is brainwashed by the world system. Amen? That's why uh, it's good that people say, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. The people who are outside of the kingdom, yeah, they're absolutely right. God will judge you. Amen? And if you make a decision to put your hope and trust and faith in the Lord Jesus, then that same judge that has the ability to judge you is going to judge you righteously, justfully, justly. As a just judge, God is not only a good guy, he's a just God, right? So the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm, amen? And the chaotic world that we live in, I don't know where you're at, what part of the world you're listening from or watching from, amen? But over here in the United States, there's a lot of chaos going on, a lot of things happening. And not only externally, what about the chaos that's happening in the hearts of every single person, Amen? And the hearts of every single person, something is going on right now. And the thoughts of every person, something is going on right now. So we have to know who to go to, right? And who to trust. We can't trust everything. Um, we can't put everything that we're going through and tell everybody what we're going through. Amen? Especially if they're not trustworthy. We need to trust in the Lord. God calls on you. God calls on me to trust in him. That's a calling from God for us to call, um, trust him. Amen. One of the wills of God is to believe in the one who he sent. Who did God send? I'm glad I said send and I'm glad the Bible says send. He didn't create Jesus. God sent himself in the form of a man named Jesus. Amen. Um, to go into this world, come into this world and to do what he did already. We trust in him. I trust in him. He even says that he will fight for you. If God be for us, who could be against us? We have almighty, all-powerful, El Shaddai, almighty God fighting for us. Are you kidding me? Who's going to beat him? No one. You know, I could lose some battles, win some battles. I could lose some fights, win some fights. But God's record of wins and losses is 100% wins all the time. He has trillions of wins, zero losses. God never loses. Amen. Despite popular opinion, God never loses. God never loses. Amen. Uh, Saskatchewan, Canada is in the building. Amen. That's where you're from. And over there in Canada, uh, a lot of people say, a lot of um, people from the U.S. say that they're going to move to Canada because Canada is more uh, good or more this, that, and the third. I believe wherever we find people, there's always going to be chaos. It could be a different situation in Canada. Um, than the U.S. for sure. Amen. But I believe there's humans in Canada, just like there's humans in the U.S., and there's always going to be some chaos. So in that chaos, are you willing to trust in the one who could calm the chaos and the one who wants us to remain calm, amen, through the chaos and the one who could calm the chaos? I'd rather trust in Christ. Amen. Kevin here. Amen. Good morning, brother DJ. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you, my friend and my brother. And it's good to see you. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, always God is good. Thank you for coming by to the morning Devo. So even when life feels unfair, right? Um, a lot of times life does feel unfair. You'd be like, why is this happening to me? You ever been to that point of life? Why is this happening to me? Um, or something might just pop up in your life and you'd be like, man, I only thought that would happen to them. I only thought that would be from the movies. I never thought it would hit me. Amen. I've been there, done that, and I'm going through issue right now. Amen. That I was like, wow, I never thought I would go through this. But despite of anything that I go through in my life, I'm hard-headed, stubborn. I'm never letting go of God's word. I'm never letting go of his kingdom, his purpose, his plan over my life. Even when things don't line up the way I think it's supposed to line up, I'm still going to trust him. I'm all in, 100%. 
Not perfect, but being perfected. Amen. Not knowing everything about God, but knowing enough to know that I could put my hope, faith, trust, eternity in his hand. So whatever the case may be, this is just how I am. I'm going to trust in him. Um, did you look at other religions, Sam? Listen, I don't have time to look at every single religion. Amen. But I can tell you this. Not all religions believe that Jesus is God. And Jesus himself says he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man can get to the Father except through him. So that claim alone kind of like narrows down everything to focus on the one who said that. And the one who said that and claimed to say that and said it and claimed to be God and all this other stuff is the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you really want to do comparative religious studies or whatever, um, you're going to always find uh, the breaking point will be the Lord Jesus Christ. That would be the focus of every single religion you religion you're studying. They all have, uh, you know, some kind of deity, some kind of scripture, some kind of writings, amen, some kind of leader. But there's only one Jesus. And sometimes in other comparative religions, I've done it, just that I don't do extensive things on it, um, just because of time. Um, some people do; they go all in. They, my, my uncle, amen, he does comparative religious studies, and even he'll he'll tell you everywhere they mention Jesus. He's mentioned in a lot of different religions, amen, and they understand him, and they know about him, at least, and that's where everything divides. Jesus said, you think I came to bring peace? I I came to bring a sword to divide, right? Who's going to be with him and who's going to go against him? Jesus is that way. So I hope we could stay focused, man, even though things happen in life. I hope and pray that we can stay focused on the author and finisher of of our faith. The Bible says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's in Matthew, I believe. So helping us to stay focused is a God thing. Amen. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of things that could distract us during the day, during our life, during the live stream, during the podcast, A lot of things could distract us. And those things that distract us a lot of times, especially when we're trying to get into the Word, especially when we're trying to get into a morning Devo or a Bible study, the distractions, I don't think that's from the Lord. I believe that's from the enemy. I believe it's our own conscience trying to divert. The flesh is trying to act up. But God will help us to remain focused on what needs to be focused on Him. He needs to be focused on. So rather than, you know, look at the offenses or rather than look at the issues or the problems or the chaos in your life and the chaos in my life, let's look at the peace of our lives. Let's look at the love of our lives. Let's look at a savior. Let's look at a, a, a king. Let's look at an emperor. Let's look at a at an author of a word, a scripture, a living, breathing word. Amen. Let's look at Exodus fourteen fourteen. What God did for them, he could do for us. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. So today, rather than rehash some things, offenses and um, some issues that you have with somebody or brother or sister or whatever the case may be. Let's look at the Lord first. Amen. Go to God with those issues and we could trust him and he'll calm the chaos. Forgiveness is huge. We spoke about that yesterday. Um, Forgiveness is huge. Let's not hold on to unforgiveness. Sister Joy says, amen. Stay strong in faith in the Lord. He is our hope in this life. Amen. Notice how she said in this life, because there's another life to come. So while we're hoping and putting our trust in this life in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's just practice, right, for the opportunity we're going to have to be with the Lord Jesus for all eternity. But while we're here, yes, let's be lights in the darkness. There's a lot of darkness happening right now. So forgiveness, holding on to unforgiveness is not a good thing. I don't suggest you hold on to any unforgiveness. I've been hurt. I'm pretty sure you've been hurt. Right. You've hurt somebody. I'm pretty sure I've hurt somebody. But holding on to unforgiveness will never mount up to something good. It will only mount up to something that will destroy, that will hinder, that will keep us away uh, from peace, keep us away from the mercy, uh, keep us away from people. And we might be getting bitter instead of better. Amen. So God will help us to forgive anyway. The way he forgave us despite of who, what we did, despite of who we are. Amen. Yes, Matthew 6, is the kingdom scripture, right? Seek first the kingdom of God. Thank you, Brother Benny. God bless you. It's good to see you, my friend and my bro. Um, God bless you and your family. It's good to see you in the morning, Devo. So help me 
to forgive the way you forgive, Lord. That's a prayer right there. That's a word right there. Can you imagine the Lord and Savior, the one who took three nails for us, for me, for you, for apparently dying on a criminal's cross when he knew that he was innocent, blameless, sinless. He didn't do anything wrong. He knew we were the ones that were in the wrong. God demonstrated his own love in this, that while we were still haters of God, while we were still his enemies, he still died for us. He still forgave us. And he's still offering his protection. Amen. Free of charge. He's fighting for us. He's interceding for us. When the enemy comes to accuse me and to accuse you and to accuse our families, God said, mm, Jesus is saying, nope, that's one of mine. Amen. You can't accuse him, her, them of this, that, and the third because I am the one who saved them. I'm the one who fought for them. I'm the one who laid down my life for them. And there's no greater love. In t- uh, um, there's no greater love than this than a friend laying his life down for us. God laid his life down for us. Amen. I don't think there's any other religion that has a savior God who is also a warrior God, who's a savior God, who's a king, who's a prince of peace, who's a wonderful counselor, who has three. God, Father, God, Son, God, Holy Spirit. I don't think there's any other religion like that on this planet. There's only one Jesus, one real Jesus that completes all the law. So we have the sauce. It's just that I know a lot of times we probably look like to the world that, oh, those Christians, they think they have it all together. We don't have it all together. God is holding us together. There's a big difference. I'm not perfect. God is perfecting me. It's a big difference. Amen. Oh, you think you're better than... No, I don't think I'm better than nobody. Any Christian that's going around saying, oh, I'm better than you. No, we have the best option. We have Jesus, amen? We have the best alternative. So if a, if a Christian brother or sister is going around saying, oh, I'm better than you because I have Jesus, they're a little off in their theology. Um, there's nothing good about me. Only thing that's good about me is the one who is inside of me, Holy Spirit God, who is good and works out his goodness through me. And through every brother and sister, everybody I've seen in my life, everybody spoke to my life, I believe we all have faults, right? But I believe that if you gave your life to the Lord, you put your trust and your hope, and he's calming the chaos in your life right now, I believe that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you and lives in me. So therefore, we can rely on that spirit to get us up, to lift us up. And we, don't, we can look past our issues because we have Jesus in our lives. God does it for us, right? He looks past our issue. He looks past our thought life. He looks past our lust, our temptation. He looks past that. Amen. He'll deal with our sin. Amen. Because he loves us so much. He doesn't want us to wallow in sin. He doesn't want us to hang out sinners. Like he doesn't want us to. He, he died for us to for us to be broken free from sin. We, sin. we deal with sin, but I'm no longer a sinner. You're no longer a sinner. If you're calling yourself a sinner and you're saved... Um, go to the Lord right now. Amen. That doesn't make any sense. Jesus didn't die and we remain sinners. Jesus died to kill sin in our lives and through our lives. We deal with sin. So we're saints, right? That deal with sin because of a broken world, fallen nature and all that stuff. Fallen man, all that stuff. But we're no longer sinners. I can't identify myself as a sinner. I have to identify myself as a saint, right? A son of the holy God. A son of God the Father. Amen. And so are you. Look at look at the scriptures. Look at the gospels and see what Jesus did for you and what he did for me. Look at John 3.16 all the way to the end of that chapter. See why people don't trust in him. People See why people don't believe in him. Because he, he's the light of the world. He came to expose darkness. Amen. We could no longer live in darkness. Um, a lot of people that are Christian are trying to live in darkness and trying to live in light at the same time. It's never going to work out, my friend. Don't do it. It's not even worth it anyway. Let God fight the battles that we know without him, we, won't go, we ain't going to win anyway. He's fighting our battles for us. Amen. And he wants us to remain calm. Amen. That's a word for somebody today. That's a word for me. Just remain calm. Why? Because if you, you know, go into the chaotic way of thinking, uh, uh, you're going to do some things or I'm going to do some things um, that I'm going to regret later on. And it's going to be based on emotions. It's going to be based out of um, being frantic. Uh, it's going to be pa- based out of being chaotic. Not peaceful, but be- 
um, acting on chaotic ways, you know what I mean? Chaotic thinking. And that's not a good place to be. Dancing for God once says in Psalm 46, 10 amplified, let be and be, uh, let be and be still and know, recognize and understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. So regardless, right? It seems like regardless um, what people may say against God, God is still in control. He's still sovereign. He's still um, exalted in the heavens and in the earth. But he's offering a relationship with him. Amen. Every day, every second of the day, God is offering us into, he's, he's inviting us into a personal relationship with him every day. There's not one day that goes by where I can't see the goodness of God in my life and in other people's lives. Even in this broken, fallen, messed up, busted world, I can still see the goodness of God. I can still see the glimpse of his love, his grace, his mercy. Amen. When I wake up in the morning, amen, that's the mercy of God. When you woke up this morning, that's the mercy of God. When you're still operating in ministry, knowing that you've done some things, that's the grace of God. Amen. So the grace of God is God giving us what we don't deserve. And the mercy of God is holding back what we do deserve. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. So God is calling me, God is calling you to remain calm. He says he's going to fight for us, and guess what? His word is good. He's going to fight for us. He said it in Exodus to the people uh, of that time, and I believe he could speak that into our lives right now if he, if he pleases. Amen? A lot of, uh, I, I'm not the one, a person like will go to the old scriptures, old, old covenant, and try to bring and extract it into the new and say, uh, that's for us too. I just ask the question and I ask God, you said that before. Are you still saying that now? That's a question that I ask. And it's an honest question. Amen. A lot of people say, oh, from Genesis to Revelation, God's word never changes. I agree 100 percent. But from Genesis to Revelation, not everything that you read in the scriptures in the Old Testament is specifically for me and for you in the New Testament. It's not. If you read, if you do Bible study in the scripture, you will see, like Jeremiah 29, 11, for instance. I'm going to get in trouble for this. But everybody uses that scripture. A lot of people use that. I'm not going to say everybody. A lot of people use that for a new covenant promise. And it's an old covenant promise to a, to a nation, to a people for a time. Amen. It's God saying it, so therefore it's always valid. I'm just saying that a lot of times people will take that out, put that, and plop it into the New Testament, the New Testament church. I don't do that. I just ask the question. God, you said it for them. Are you going to do that for us? I think it's a good question, a valid question. And I believe God answers those questions. He doesn't have to answer any of my questions or any of your questions. But if he does, he does. And it's a good thing. God still speaks all through the day and all through the night, all through his word. Amen. And through people. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for clearing that we are no longer sinners when Christ comes into our lives. We cannot be both. We either saints or sinners. Amen. Amen. Um, I realized that, like, not too long ago, because I used to say the same thing. A lot of people say, ah, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Am I identifying to be a sinner or am I identifying to be a saint? Which one am I? Like Sister Joyce said, you can't be both. It's a little weird to be a saint and a sinner at the same time. It's almost like a double-minded person, unstable in all their ways. They shouldn't expect to hear from God or for God to respond to them, right? That's what the scripture says, but... Amen. So I'm going to learn. You're going to learn. We're going to learn together how to forgive and trust God, even when chaos hits our lives and trust him because he's the one who says he's going to fight for me. Amen. Exodus 14, 14. Read the whole chapter of Exodus chapter 14. Get the context of who he's talking to, why he said it, the purpose of why he said it, all that. And you will get a, a greater understanding of the scripture. Amen. I'm just using it as a devotional to steer my focus on what God says instead of what the world is saying. Amen. So I hope this helps somebody. I hope this is something that would challenge our way of thinking going forward. Amen. And then we move forward in the word of God, in victory and in truth and the spirit of God. Amen. And the spirit of love. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace. <laughs>